Hello, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. Welcome to the Hypnotherapist Lounge. I am Brandy Moiler, certified hypnotherapist, and I'm here today with my colleagues. We have Isis Love and also McKean Bolognese. So today is going to be the last episode of this season, and we're going to be back New Year with all new episodes, but for today we're going to give you a little prerequisite about what to expect going forward. So today we're going to actually be working with a live client um, so that viewers will be able to see what live hypnotherapy is really like. So over the past couple months, we have really been focusing primarily on information and group hypnosis, but it's a little bit different when you're actually working with a client with a real presenting issue. So we are going to go ahead and get started with that. And so this is how we're going to close out the season, and this is how we're going to begin the next season. So today, our client that we'll be working with, her name is Liera. Liera has been diagnosed with ADHD and she is looking to for something to help her further with mental focus and concentration. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on over and we're going to go ahead and get the session started. All right. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Hey, Lear. How are you? Hi, good. How are you? I am doing great today. So I am um, definitely excited today to be working with you and I'm happy to hear a little bit more about, you know, where you're from and what's going on and, you know, helping you on your journey. How does that sound? Yeah, that sounds good. All right. And um, not able to see you. I don't know if they're OK. There you go. Amazing. OK, cool. So let's start. We're going to start off with some basic questions just to build some rapport. Um, where are you from? I'm from North Carolina. Oh, wow. What part? Um, Greensboro, if you're familiar. <laughs> OK, I'm familiar. I'm familiar with that area. Yeah. All right. So um, what do you do? I am a pharmacist. Wow. Okay. What got you into what got you into that? Um, I just always knew I wanted to be in healthcare. Um, and I just kind of went from there. That's where I ended up. So I okay. really I couldn't hear you. I said I really enjoy it. Okay. So it's something that brings you joy. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Um so what is your issue? What, tell me a little bit about what's going on currently. What's bringing you, you know, some discomfort? Yes. So I feel like it's been an ongoing issue. Um, honestly, not anything that is new. Just have a formal diagnosis now. Okay. Um, but just being able to focus in general, um, you know, having a lot of thoughts at once. Just to give an example maybe sitting through a presentation or something and then struggling to come up with questions at the end because I got lost like after the first five minutes or so, you know, just cause I, mind starts to wander, things like that. So just having a hard time, you know, focusing on the task at hand and um, kind of staying in the mindset that I need to be in, in order to complete things. Okay. Okay. So when you say so when you're say you're having these wondering thoughts, is there any type of reoccurring thoughts that you're thinking about anything in particular? I wouldn't say reoccurring necessarily. No. Mm -hmm. Just it could be anything. <laughs> okay. Okay. And so you said that this has been going on for a while. So about how long has it been going on? I would say since childhood. To be honest, <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So you've been going through this issue of not really being able to focus, retain information, mind kind of wondering. So what do you want? Like, how do you want your desired life to look? Like, with 
with, you know, working on this focus, working on, you know, being able to hone in on your projects? Like, what would this look like if it was already there, your desired uh, outcome? Oh, wow. That's a really good question. Um, I think it would look like being given a task or an assignment or something and being able to, when I'm ready to work on it, one, not it not take so long to work on just because sometimes if you know something is going to be difficult to start, or difficult to get into, it can hinder you from starting it. So not getting rid of that. And then two, once I am starting it, being able to actually sit there, hone in and complete something without, you know, all these distractions and without it taking longer than it should for me to complete something. Okay. Yes, I see that for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just a couple more questions. Um, do you have any type of like routine, like things you do when you first wake up or things you do before you go to bed? Um I would say maybe just like, I don't know, watching TV before I go to bed. That's probably the last thing I do is watch okay. a show before I fall asleep. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything you do when you first wake up? Mm, I like on the immediate wake up, probably check my phone. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Check phone. It, checking anything in particular or just doesn't just, matter? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Probably yeah. like just seeing what text I missed, alerts, whatever else, and then just kind of going from there. Okay. And you'll see me kind of look down. I'm actually just taking a little bit of notes as we go through. <laughs> um, so, okay, going back to sleep, how is your sleep? Would you say you get eight hours, six hours? How many hours do you, you think you get enough sleep? Uh, I think it can vary, but this past little bit, I've been getting probably six to eight hours a night. Yeah. A lot of good sleep these past couple of months, I would say. <laughs> okay. So sleep is getting better. It is. Okay. That's good. Okay. And what about your, uh, what would you say? How was your water intake? Mm. Um, I try to track it just by like how many bottles of water I drink. So mm -hmm. maybe like three to four bottles a day. Okay. Beautiful bottles. All right. And what about your diet? And uh, how was that? Um, <laughs> it varies. Okay. <laughs> Some days, you know, I'm on track. I, I don't eat meat. So, okay. but um, some days I'm on track doing good. And then I think my diet depends on my stress level. Let me say that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So stress level. Uh, Okay, depends. Okay. And lastly, um, what about exercise? You can do anything to stay physically fit? That also varies um, depending on the time that I have. Um, if I do have the time and it's more of a like a less busy time in my life or with work and everything, then I will like go to the gym and treadmill, light weights sometimes. But if it's a really busy time and I'm stressed out, probably not working out gotcha okay so nothing consistent <laughs> let me say that nothing consistent okay all right so i feel can you still see me yes amazing i gathered enough information and um i want to explain a little bit to you um how hypnosis works i want to dispel any myths you may have i want to address any type of fears, and I want to set the expectations so you can know what's going on tonight. How does that sound? Sounds good. Amazing. So uh, first, hypnosis is a natural state. You go in and out of hypnosis throughout your day. Certain drink things may trigger you into a hypnotic state. Maybe it could be your environment, um, maybe anxiety, maybe like a movie. These certain things uh, put you in a natural hypnotic state. I'll give you a better example. Have you ever drove your car and then you got to your destination? You was like, wait a minute, how did I even get here? 
all the time. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Or I give you another one. Have you ever uh, watched a season of your favorite show and then all of a sudden you're seven episodes in? Um, yeah, you're in a natural state of, of, of being in um, hypnosis. So we go in this state every day. This state is a narrow focus state. And so what happens is it bypasses your critical mind. So um, this is where you can change your negatives into positives. So during your hypnotic journey, you're going to hear the word deep sleep. And this is just a trigger word to take you into a deeper hypnotic state. You're not going to go to sleep. Um, it's a very relaxed state with your eyes closed. You won't go unconscious. You're not going to lose any control or anything. You're going to always be aware. You're going to hear the sounds around you. Um, and you can't even get stuck in hypnosis. I do want you to know this is not like a proof serum. So you're not going to, you know, go out and start spilling out all your secrets. Now, this is important because, you know, you may wonder if you're in hypnosis during this process and you are, you're going to be in there. Your body's going to be relaxed. So I know the reason that we're here today is to bring more focus, more organization, um, into your life so that you won't have so many wandering thoughts. And so one of the benefits of hypnosis is that we can access and work with the subconscious mind to facilitate this change that you want, to put you in a better space where, you know, you're getting these homework assignments and you're getting these different things and you're just, you know, completing them with grace and ease. So you're going to hear a lot of things around you. Your mind may wonder and it's okay. Um, I do want you to know that this is a to do with process, not a to do process. So I'm definitely going to need your cooperation, um, and your participation so that we together can make, um, these changes for you. Okay. How does that sound? Sounds great. All right. So I'm going to do a couple of tests. Now these tests, you cannot pass, you cannot fail. It's just going to simply help me. Um, understand how you take in information, what type of ways you learn. Are you more left brain? Are you more right brain? So only thing I'm going to have you do is um, you can lift up your left hand, put it up to your face about, um, about eyebrow level. Okay. There you go. And just stare at that middle finger. There you go. Okay. Make sure your feet are on the ground and your other hand is on your lap. Let me adjust here. Okay. Okay. All right. So I want you to stare at that middle finger and take a deep breath. And on the exhale, you will begin to see your fingers separating wider and wider, further and further apart, separating wider and wider, further and further apart, wider and wider, separating further and further, wider and wider. Your fingers are feeling like they may wanna separate Good job. Good job. Now I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and have you put your hand back in your lap. And I want you to go ahead and pick up the opposite hand and put it in the same position. Okay. And I want you to stare off at that middle finger again. And what I want you to do is I want you to take a deep inhale. And on the exhale, There you go. Thank you so much. And just have you put your hand back on your lap. And I am going to break something down to you called the theory of mind. And um, I'm going to do my best to explain this to you on my, on my whiteboard. <laughs> so basically, in a nutshell, the theory of mind is 
how your mind works, how the subconscious mind works in different parts in the mind. And I think this is really cool because it's going to help you understand what's going on and how hypnosis can help you. So bear with my drawing. <laughs> but let's just say this is the mind. Now down here at the bottom, I'm going to put a P. That's your primitive mind. Down here is where you have your fight, flight, or freeze. So basically when a situation happens, you're either going to freeze up, you're either going to run, or you're going to try to fight. This We have this because back in ancient times, you know, we had to run away from the other tribes, big animals. So we needed this response uh, system. But the problem is most people are stuck in this, right? They're stuck in this. So you have your primitive mind. And um, what happens is, I'm going to draw a little line from right here. From age zero to eight, so basically from the day you're born to about eight years old, mm -hmm. you are very suggestible. So what that means is you take in, well, we, we take in everything as absolutely true. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we start to develop our program. So maybe somewhere, you know, you could have picked up on something and thought it was true and develop a program around it, right? So here you have your known and unknown associations. So what that means is you have things in your subconscious mind that make you feel good. And you have things in your subconscious mind that makes you feel bad. So, or negative or positive. So for example, you, um, you may like chocolate cake, but don't like spinach. So you associate chocolate cake as something good. Spinach is maybe is something bad. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So the mind has two parts. You have the subconscious mind, which goes here, right? and that makes up 88% of your mind. And then you have, let's just say right here, uh, the 12%, which is your conscious mind. So that's the, the thinking mind. That's your analytical mind where you make decisions. That's where your willpower is. Um, and then the subconscious mind is like your intuition, your, yeah. free, your free thought, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, I'm gonna give you some more examples of how this, how this works now. So when you have a thought, I wanna stop smoking cigarettes or I wanna concentrate more or I wanna focus more, what happens is it goes into the, um, it goes from the conscious mind all the way down into this critical mind and then all the way down to the known associations. And it checks your subconscious programming. And if your subconscious mind is resisting to make the change, the critical mind will block out all of your thoughts. And you're going to continue on that loop of not being focused, you know, having those, wonder, those wandering thoughts. But what hypnosis does is it takes them same thoughts. I want to be more focused. I want to stop having these wandering thoughts. And it bypasses that mind, that critical mind. It opens the door to a um, direct access to the subconscious where we're going to put in those positive um, hypnotic suggestions. So the ones with, you know, you finishing tests and completing them on time, you know, not having that anxiety when it comes to uh, tests, like really, really wanting to, to do it and love to do it. So I'm going to be working with the 88%, which is your subconscious. And you'll be working with the 12. And so together, we're going to have 100% effective rates, right? <laughs> so that was my breakdown for that. So okay. last, what was that? No, I said, okay, that makes sense. Amazing. So the last thing we'll, we'll do is an, another um, another thing that I'm going to kind of do to just kind of relax you. And we're going to slowly start to go into the um, hypnosis portion. So what I would love for you to do is uh, take your pointer fingers, have them apart, and then clamp your thumbs together. So your, your thumbs are clamped together and your fingers are open, right? So thumbs are clamped and hands are open like this. Yes, exactly. Yep. And I want you to put them right above your face. There you go. And I want you just to stare in the middle of them. There you go. And you'll slowly start to see that your fingers want to come closer and closer as though they are magnets. There you go. No matter how hard you try to pull them apart, they're coming closer and closer together. More and more. Closer and closer as it gets closer. 
It continues, this magnet pulling your fingers together more and more. As you breathe in and out, your fingers want to come together more and more. Closer and closer, that's it. Pulling together like two magnets. Closer and closer, more and more. In fact, each breath that you take, your fingers get closer and closer together. And the moment that your fingers touch, I want you to nod your head yes to let me know. There you go, closer and closer. So close, they just want to touch each other. And as your fingers touch, I want you to nod your head yes to let me know. There you go, more and more. And as your fingers touch, you have reached your high peak of suggestibility and you are now entering a state of hypnosis. Excellent. Just keep focusing on your breath. Taking those cleansing breaths in the nose, out the mouth. And just being calm and relaxed like you're going to bed. Just keep those eyes closed and focusing on the breathing. You can allow your hands to rest gently in your lap now. Just get nice and comfortable. Resting those hands in your lap. And get as comfortable as you can. Focusing on the breath. On the breath. Allow your hands to go into your lap. Down in your lap. Okay, and you can relax your arms and your lap. Excellent. Just closing your eyes, focusing on your breath, taking those nice, deep, cleansing breaths. Just like you're going to bed, just feeling that calm, relaxed breathing. And then as you focus on the sensation of your breath, and as it enters, and as it exits your body. Count each breath in your mind from one to five and starting over. Maybe counting on every exhale. Just finding that calm, rhythmic breathing. And if your mind starts to wander, gently bring your focus back to your breath and continue counting. Excellent. That's right. And as you shift your attention to your body, you can start at the top of your head and slowly move your focus down across your forehead, over your eyes and eyelids. Your facial muscles, your jaw muscles, just feeling your neck across your shoulders, relaxing into this calm with every breath. 
Now you feel it over your upper back, and up your arms, allowing it to travel down into your wrists and hands, and your fingertips. Maybe feeling the tingling sensation, maybe a heaviness, maybe a lightness. I'll let you decide. Now you feel this calm coming through your chest and down into your belly. As you keep focusing on your breath, relax and calm. Relaxing in your hips, releasing all the tension. Just unwinding, allowing that calm through your legs, down over your knees, your shins, your calves, your ankles, down to your feet, down to the tippy toes. Feeling this wonderful sensation from your head to your toe, from your toe to your head. You're becoming aware of your thoughts without judgment. Imagine your thoughts as clouds passing by in the sky. Observe them as they come and go without attaching to any one thought. And if you notice yourself getting lost in a thought, gently bring your attention back to the present moment. You can visualize, imagine, or make believe. You're feeling safe in a protected spot, maybe at the beach the forest or any peaceful location. Visualize yourself in this place, paying attention to the details, feeling the sensations, being in this serene environment, Just taking it all in. So calming, so relaxing. And you can repeat these positive affirmations to yourself silently, related to focus, self-acceptance, and calmness. For example, you can silently say to yourself, capable of focusing my mind. I am capable of focusing my mind. I am capable of focusing my mind. Excellent, that's right. You may say, I can focus on a task and won't stop until I complete it. I can focus on a task and won't stop until I complete it. I can focus on a task and won't stop until I complete it. Excellent. Very good. Now think about all the things you're grateful in your life. Express gratitude for simple and meaningful things. Like the people who support you. Your experiences. And all the opportunities you have. Remember that progress in meditation 
especially for individuals with ADHD, may be gradual. It's okay to start with shorter durations and gradually extend your meditation sessions as you become more comfortable with the practice. Be patient with yourself. And over time, you may experience improved focus and a greater sense of calm. And you allow yourself to go down deeper and deeper. Just allow yourself to go deeper And it's calm, relaxed, hypnotic state. We're having some technical difficulties and we're coming back on in just a second. All right, there we go. And as you sit in this calm, relaxed state, relaxed in your mind, relaxed in your body, and relaxed in your emotions, you feel this wonderful sense of relaxation and you feel confident that you'll be able to complete any task at hand, to concentrate, and to focus. Because it's so much greater to live in this feeling of completion of confidence and to live in the sense of anxiety from procrastination. And this is simple each and every day. It's waking up, placing one foot before the other. Now I want you to imagine yourself on a path. And we'll call this path the yellow brick road. And as you put one foot in front of the other, you follow that path religiously, and no matter what, until you reach the destination. And we can apply this in all aspects of life. You're not just confident, but you're also competent. So very capable of achievement and wins, no matter how big, nor how small. And every time you feel that feeling of anxiety that can come from procrastination, every time that comes, You will get up and you will take action. You won't let that build. Even on the most scattered or laziest of days, you won't let that build. Continuing to put one foot in front of the other. Following that path, focused 
on the destination. Now I want you to wiggle your toes on your left side. And wiggle your toes on your right side. That's how aware you are. And you will not self-sabotage. But you'll move forward in the art of completion. Now I want you to take a big deep cleansing breath. And exhale. No stress, no worries, no fear. Take a big deep cleansing breath. And exhale. And let's do that one more time. Big deep cleansing breath. And just as you are able to follow my lead, you will also be able to follow your own lead. Your mind will come together and unify. And you love the way that this feels, how you feel so much in control. Nothing scattering away from you. You're in control. Because you have complete and total control over your mind and where it goes. And at the end of the day, it's just tasks after all. You do them, you do a job well done. And at the end of the day, you get into your bed and you rest comfortably, peacefully, knowing that everything that you've set out to do, you have completed. Now we're gonna take all of these positive suggestions and we're gonna close with the door into your subconscious mind. And this feeling of relaxation, confidence, knowing, capability will all stay with you from this moment forward. You had a problem, another problem is solved. Now we're gonna close the door and we're gonna bring you back into your room, into your time, and into your space. Knowing that you can never go backwards, but only move forward forgetting about the days that you couldn't follow the straight line doesn't exist anymore and focusing on the here the now and the future starting down at zero One, coming into awareness, into your room. Two, 
feeling the air around you. Three. Smelling all the smells that surround you in your space. Or pulling everything in to your body, every positive suggestion. And five, eyes open. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, eyes open. So Lara, we're going to give you a moment to come back into your space and then we'd like to hear from you and how you feel whenever you're ready and what your experiences have been. Yes. I feel like it's hard to explain. <laughs> um, it's very calming, I will say. Um, I don't know. I feel like after I'm just <laughs> like, no worries. <laughs> Everything's good. I feel relaxed. I feel positive. If that, <laughs> if that makes sense. Because um, positivity is, is an energy. Yeah. Mm, sure. Um, it's a good feeling. Just like calm, direct, no, no worries at this time. That's how it feels. Would you say that you maybe feel lighter? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's definitely something that I would say it's just general with hypnosis in general. I think that you definitely feel lighter. You feel less burdened with yeah. a lot of the problems. That's a good way. Less burdened. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Do you have any questions or what would you like to say? Uh, I just would like to say um, just a quick couple, I guess, uh, tips for Liera, I guess, moving forward. Uh, just have like try and keep a positive mind script because you want to sometimes you're your worst enemy. So throughout the day when you're busy and you want to keep a positive mind script, um, maybe making a list of things so that in case you get distracted, you can keep track of yourself and then make sure you can complete what you need to for the day. Um, also, um, like when you're working in your space, try to focus on what's directly in front of you and um, don't look too far outside of your own comfort zone because you'll start to feel maybe a little bit of stress or overwhelmed with having to do other things instead of keeping you on, on the current task. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then also maybe if you looked into using smart goals, like on a weekly basis, start setting a smart goal. And um, I think that'd be very beneficial for you. No, that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, I love that about the smart goals thing. I, I think that's mm -hmm. awesome. That's great. Isis, what would you well, like to say, Lear? <laughs> well, Lear, first off, definitely want to say I'm glad that you came in and you had the, the um, you know, you had the, um, courageousness to come in and, and want to make change in your life i would definitely say that you know a tool that you could put in your tool bag would be you know just cultivating a uh, a routine when you get up and maybe before you go to sleep and the reason why i say that is because getting up and getting straight on the phone can kind of put you in that anxiety state already because when you first wake up you're already in hypnosis and so if you're taking on everything that you're seeing on your phone you can kind of trigger that anxiety and trigger you know um, not being focused so i would say you know maybe try to incorporate going over your goal some type of breathing exercise before you even pick up your phone and i feel like that will definitely um help guide you throughout throughout the day uh, along with just setting some intentions on how you would like your day to go no that's all very helpful i feel like i could like take on anything right now like, that's how i feel that's good we want you to sustain that too yeah. and i think too um if i could add just having that positive mindset i mean we're like you said we were we're our own biggest enemies we tell us we tell ourselves all these terrible things and we envision the worst case scenario 
But that's just an awesome villainy of many. There's so many possibilities. Yeah, you can go in and ruin it, or you can go in and succeed. That's also a possibility. So no possibility is greater or less than another. They're just possibilities. So just lighten up on that, you know, thinking the worst case scenario, you know, because knowing that you're full in total control to create the outcomes that you desire. That's hard to remember in mind, but it is, it is, you know, and everybody's guilty. You know, we all do it. We all tell ourselves these horrible things that's going to happen and stuff. And, it, and it's really, you're just playing on your belief system. You know, the mind is extremely powerful. It's powerful as far as our emotions, our behaviors, and the way that our energy is even read to others. Do you have anything you would like to add about that, especially our uh, energy being read to others, the mindset energy mark sales? Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, I have no complaints about the experience. Um, felt really good overall. I think it's nice to go into that calm state of mind, because like that whole time, I didn't feel like my mind racing I didn't it was really like just clear mm -hmm. thoughts at all really nice. <laughs> and then also an anchored space that you can return back to if the stresses get high like I've already tapped into that I know where that is I can go back into that energy and into yeah. that space it's like there's very few times in the where I'm just clear no no thoughts racing none of that so that that was nice Awesome. Does anyone else have anything else that they would like to add for Liera? Have you done uh, hypnotherapy at all before or any type of other calming techniques for the ADHD? Not specifically, no, not for that. Mm -hmm. No. That's something you... I just kind of always assumed I had. And then kind of dealt with <laughs> never really tried to or um yeah nothing specific that I was like hey, that could help me outside of just like being, being, trying to make a list whether or not I actually remember to look at the list is another thing but things like that you know just day to day trying to stay on top of things mm -hmm. do you feel like you would use this in the future again or Yes, definitely. And what would you recommend, McKean, as far as treatment for a person uh, coming in with ADHD? Uh, just basically. Uh, what do you do? Like, would you recommend like weekly, uh, bi-weekly, you know? Um, I, would, I would definitely start off with weekly in the beginning and then just get a hold on uh, where things are going. And then based on maybe the first two sessions, see if you go out um, bi-weekly or maybe once a month, depending on how quickly you can achieve. And then how severe the ADHD. But always the main thing is, sorry about that, go ahead. I was just saying, depending on how severe the ADHD can be would depend on probably how often. Yeah, I feel like, cause when the client knows what they're focusing on and what the main thing is, that kind of is their, um, you know, trouble spots. You can you can start um, whittling them away each session, and then you start seeing progress. And then usually, um, when you start working on certain things, other things have like this magic way of kind of not being as difficult. And so it allows you to start working in a different space. And and then you see definitely within the first couple of weeks how, like you said after this session alone, how you feel differently, how you have all these feelings now and you feel like you can achieve and make progress. And so when you have that momentum, um, you just need to keep it going. And, and so I feel like with the sessions and then when you get the tools and you start practicing what we are giving to you, then you see, you know, it's, it's actually quite easy. You just got to have the courage to do it. <laughs> no, that makes sense. I could see how building on this mm -hmm. and having repeated sessions could make a difference because based off of how I feel just after this one. So I could see 
just like with anything else, <laughs> the more you do it and then the better results you would see. So yeah. yeah just- absolutely. That's beautiful. I love it. <laughs> awesome. Anything else, Isis, you'd like to say? Um, I think I think we put the icing on the cake on that one. I would just definitely say, you know, don't beat yourself up about this. Baby steps, celebrate the small wins, mm-hmm. and just continue with those small wins because that repetitive um, pattern, what you do, is going to make it easier and easier for you to do it. So don't beat yourself up and definitely celebrate the, the small wins. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Liera, for coming on and being our guest today. I'm sure that this will bring great change into your life and kind of give you ideas of what to look forward to in going forward. I think Hypnotherapy is a wonderful addition pretty much to really any aspect of life. I think we've all worked with clients all across the board, you know, in so many different aspects. And I think what's really, really fascinating um, about everything is what what I notice as a hypnotherapist, the clients that I have worked with um, the longest over, over, you know, for a long extended period of time, it's true, they have the greatest sense of results but some things may not need that you know some things might be just a one session thing some things might be hey i just need to come about you know one to three times and i'm done but certain things that i think you know and we all know that that sessions evolve they never finish the way that they start right i'm coming in from back pain and you know three sessions down the road you know i'm going through a divorce and i'm like you know talking about all these other emotional factors right so the thing that's to know that when you start hypnotherapy is that your sessions may evolve and it's really really good to be in that space and almost look at it's like a weekly reset to re uh to inform to um enforce certain things and certain behaviors yeah anything else you guys would like to add and i do want to hear from everyone so as you go through and add anything uh go ahead and tell us about you and who you are and your practice and how everyone can find you um so isis we'll start with you here you can add and then just tell us about yourself um so my name is isis love and um I am here to help entrepreneurs bring more balance in their life and um, bring more money into their life by de-stressing themselves. And so you can find me on all platforms as Isis Love 11. And um, I just released a powerful, powerful gratitude journal um, that really can help you tap into the blessings that's all around you and by you doing that it's going to help you increase more in your life by just being grateful for the smallest things wow so yeah <laughs> i don't know what else you did anything else you want to and add? you are located you're are, are you seeing clients locally as well i am seeing clients right now on zoom and i'm located in houston texas so you can reach out th- to me um, because on my social media platform or even my website, which is isis-love.com. Awesome. Mm-hmm. And then you'll have to check us out too. Since we're local, we're both here in Houston. We're going to, and you'll see more about this, but on November 17th, it's a Friday evening, we are going to be launching our Voice is Medicine. It'll be hypnosis and sound bath out on the lawn at Canaan and West Houston. So you have that, and you'll see us again coming up soon. So that's awesome. McKean, tell us about who you are and your practice and where we can find you. All right. I just want to say once again, that was a beautiful session. You know, it just shows how versatile uh, and a wide range, how we can help people with all sorts of situations. And um, I think that was really great. And so like uh, I'm in Los Angeles, so I can help people all locally. Right. So we can get McKean <laughs> for our event. That's okay. Next time. That's next time. Cool. <laughs> 
But um, yeah, so I'm here in LA and I do the hypnotherapy, I do Reiki, I do past life regression. I work with uh, anyone and everyone. I have clients from 17 to 75, so there's quite a big range in there. But we work with, you know, stress, anxiety, uh, pain management, uh, weight loss, uh, changing bad habits, eliminating those, you know, uh, abundance, motivation, all the good stuff, sleep, you know, anything you want to work on. As I said before, it's so wide and varied. I, I work with it all on multiple levels, like I said, hypnotherapy, Reiki, and past life regression. So I like to delve into all those arenas. And you can find me on www.ignitrolighthealing, all one word, dot com. And then if you want to find me on the social media, on TikTok and Instagram, and also YouTube, we do the uh, at Ignite Your Light Healing. So there's that. And then any emails you want to send me, my email is McKean at igniteyourlighthealing.com my phone number if you want to call me is 310-387-5044 and i love to work with everybody i love everybody <laughs> awesome. great well thank you guys so much this has been so awesome we're right here at nine o'clock central standard time so guys this is going to close out our series for this season so we just wish everyone a happy holidays it's holiday six we're going into thanksgiving and then christmas and you will see us again in january we're going to be doing more live sessions like this with a lot more stuff so stay tuned you'll see the advertisements as they start to come out about the new season and thank you guys so much it's been an honor all right thank you see you guys next time let's get some let's get some music on as we close this out